Welcome to the Affordable DC Generator YouTube channel, and this is part two of the do-it-yourself power box assembly. And I'm going to get into how to wire the guts up, so that way after you've landed all of the components on the outside, getting all the inside stuff buttoned up. So let's get into it. Now the outside's pretty straightforward. I've got uh, the circuit breakers and switches laid out on the center, then cigarette lighter, USB charge port, and then some DC connects for solar in or DC out if you're going to go to an accessory that didn't have any of these attachments. Now the biggest thing here is the power meter and that uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of insight as far as what the stats on the battery is. Now this power meter is cheap money. 20 bucks, you got a volt meter. It's going to give you your current flow as far as your amps go and then also the watts. Now it also has kind of a learning capability on the battery capacity that I found and gives you a display uh, in the center as far as the uh, charging goes. So all of that is done using what's called a shunt. And this is wired in line on the negative side of the battery circuit. And this is going to basically produce a signal that's going to go to that meter and tell you how much current flow is either going in or coming out of the battery. But let's step back for a few minutes and kind of get into the layout of the internal components. On the top right, I've got the AC power inverter. This is a 300 watt unit and that goes over to a power strip. Obviously gives me multiple outlets, but then also gives me some USB charging capability as well. And that's pretty straightforward. You plug it in on one side, run the cable over. Uh, the power strip is attached using some Velcro and uh, that the Velcro strip wouldn't actually adhere to the box. So I used some 3M5200 and that seems to be holding up pretty good. And then this is bolted in using some standoffs onto the lid. All of that stuff is off the shelf at your big box hardware store. So nothing crazy here. Now that's going to be wired up directly to the bus bars using an inline fuse because that's a high current device. So I've got a automotive style DC fuse that goes right to my bus bar. Now, let's talk about the bus bars. Obviously we have a battery, there's a tray that's mounted in the bottom, so if there's any kind of spills or corrosion, all that's gonna be kept inside the tray and isn't gonna go into the actual toolbox itself. Terminals up top, uh, we wanna keep these away since these are not covered up, away from anything where it could potentially interfere and cause a short circuit. Now, the positive side goes directly off into an inline fuse, so anything that's coming out of this battery does have circuit protection and this is a uh, would probably be more of like an audio style fuse again all of this stuff's off on Amazon I'm gonna have a full write-up with all the part numbers and prices for these components so that goes through the automotive fuse down with a short little connector to a bus bar so this is gonna have 12 volt DC all the time on it no matter what as long as the fuse isn't popped so we're gonna go off of that now you can see that we have a couple of other terminals off of here these are going to go to my quick di disconnects out back. So on the back of the toolbox, I have two high current quick connects. So I can connect my alternator, a set of jumper cables, an additional battery pack, etc. And those are going to be landed all on the same lug. So that way, if I had alternator on one side and then another battery on the other, I don't have any high current going through my bus bar. It basically goes from one lug to the other, and it stays isolated here because these bus bars are not rated for really, really high currents. Same thing goes on the negative side. I have a grounding bus bar and all of my high current devices are connected to one lug and then all the smaller components are on the screw terminal. Now the reason why you want to go with the bus bars is one, it keeps everything nice and tidy. Power is on one side, ground is on the other, but then I can connect all of my devices using the screw terminals and I'm not but connecting multiple wires together and I'm trying to keep everything separate and tidy, but then I can also remove or add components down the road without having to redo any of the wiring. Now the switch plate already has circuit breakers, so I have overcurrent protection for all the smaller devices. So if I have my lights on or the radio or anything like that, I have a circuit breaker. Now it's important that these devices are circuit protected. So you're gonna need fuses or a breaker or some, some sort. If I go on the back side, this is all pre-wired, but I didn't like it because they all piggybacked off each other. So I kept some of the wiring, but what I did is I went from the circuit breaker on the positive side to my positive bus bar. So current's gonna come from the battery, through the fuse, to the bus bar, and then through one of the screw terminals to an individual circuit breaker for one circuit. From there, it's going to loop up to the switch, 
and then from the switch to the actual device. So this cigarette lighter comes from the rocker switch, which comes from the circuit breaker, which then comes from the positive bus bar. Now the other side of this cigarette lighter is the negative. That can go straight to the bus bar on the negative side over there. That's a complete circuit with a switch and with overcurrent protection built into it. Now as far as the lights are concerned, I wanted to be able to turn the lights on and off in various spots on the toolbox. So power is going to come from the switch plate to my light and I split those on the both lights, for example over here, and then the negative side of each light comes back together into a splice to one side of the push button. Now this uh, is an on off button, so you want to be careful you don't order a momentary contact. This one will actually click on and off. So you can see and when I click it off, I disrupt the ground. So in the on position, the ground wire from the lights is going to come up to the switch and then from the switch to the bus bar. So that's what I'm switching is the ground side. You can switch the power side, it doesn't really matter, um, but this was convenient for me in the wiring. So that way I can individually control all of the lights. Manchester was fair in 77. Now the radio is great because it gives you some weather band. You got a USB capability for a thumb drive and you can also do the Bluetooth or an auxiliary and so a lot of capability on the radio and the installation here is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, it's going to come off of a switch just like every other device. Now it also needs a constant power and that's really for the memory. So that's going to go straight to the bus bar. So you just follow the instructions that come with the radio. It's got a switch power, a constant power, and then a ground. And all of that's done through the existing fuse box on this particular radio. So I've got fuse protection built in there, but you have to have a constant power, otherwise you're gonna lose all of your settings on the radio. Not a big deal. The other one, if you do have a radio, uh, AM, FM capability is the antenna. So this is a rubber ducky antenna that I got that's kind of a marine unit, so it's flexible. It does have some adjustability built into it on the base, so I can move it around. And that's a simple issue of just mounting a hole, connecting it to the radio, and you're all set. Now the inverter in this unit is pretty small. It's really intended to charge up battery chargers like for my DeWalt tools or a laptop or a power television, all small devices. But it does have some power capability. And so I wanted a power strip. That way if I gotta do multiple stuff at a time, I'm not limited to just one outlet. So that's why I use the power strip. But just to give you some capability ideas, I can turn this on. And so now everything's lit up. I got 120 volts AC for house loads. I can see here on my display that the inverter right now just statically sitting is drawing 4.78 watts. So it's, it's brought the 120 volts up. Now I've got a big resistive load here. If I want to straighten my hair. And when I turn this on, you can see the display will actually show what my current draw is. So the fan kicks on for the inverter, and there we go. So right now about 20 amps on the battery, a little under 300 watts of power. Here we can see the voltage is dropping. And the battery capacity up here on the end of the display is gonna start learning as you use it, from what I understand, what it's doing and how, how the capacity is now. It just shut down probably for protection uh, due to temperature or just overcurrent. So obviously I'm not gonna be straightening my hair for very long on this, on this system. But just to show you some of the capabilities, we've got full DC and some AC on this particular unit. Now just to give you guys a little bit of a tease, you can see that I've got a larger inverter charger built into a toolbox. So I can pack that guy up and it's weather tight and it's connected to the back side of the quick connect on my power box. So now I've got some additional AC power capabilities with backup so that way if the power goes out and this thing's plugged in it automatically starts to keep my loads protected so when the utility goes down I can also charge the battery using the inverter charger to charge that battery using shore power which can be utility or AC generator. And you can see here that we're above 12.8, so battery voltage, it's pushing current in, and it's pushing about 2.2 amps. Right now, that's because my battery is almost completely charged. 
Now the great part about this is that I'm using AC power to charge my battery, but since I have two power connectors on the back, one of them is connecting this battery to a larger inverter, but I could use this one to use a set of jumper cables to go to a car battery and run the vehicle, or I can plug in some solar up front to charge this battery, or I can use the affordable DC generator. So I can run the affordable DC generator to keep everything running, but I can also then charge the battery, shut the generator off, and have battery backup using the inverter and not having to run a generator. So I got a lot of capability and redundancy built into using just some basic components that you guys can build at home. So I built this particular inverter charger so that way we can have shore power on one end and then I've got an extension cord to plug, plug a load into another. So I'm going to do a whole other video on just this particular setup, but this is great for if you have a sump pump, a refrigerator, or uh, a stove, pellet stove, or you know anything that requires power that you need to maintain within your home if the power goes out whether that's a permanent mount situation or a portable system like the toolbox, but I'm gonna get into some more videos on that down the road. This is really just about wiring the power box. I hope you guys got excited and kinda of wanna put something simple together uh, at home, so that way you get a little more redundancy into your, uh, your backups and the power availability when that utility goes down. Take care, guys.